was once a dream that was wrong. Ave, my dudes, and welcome back to Pax Romana. Now, as you could probably tell from the title of this video, we're going to talk about a certain TikToker that has a certain theory. Now, before we get into any of this craziness, I do want to say there's a slight chance that this person is a troll. Now, from everything I've read, watched, listened to, I don't believe that to be the case. But if she is a troll, it's one of the greatest trolls in history. All that being said, I believe she's legitimate. Well, as far as her beliefs, I just wanted to put that at the beginning of the video just in case it comes back to bite me in the ass. Now also, we're not gonna get into debunking her claims. I'm not a debunker. You know, I'm not Facebook fact check. Her claims are so absurd that it's more comedy than anything. But what I wanna get into in this video is her reasons why she believes these insane things, and also how she responds to people who dare call her out on it. Now I'm sure that many of you are aware of the TikToker named Mom Lenny. She has a crazy theory that the Roman Empire didn't exist. It's made up. It's completely fabricated. Everything I'm doing here is about a made-up empire that never happened. It's false. No way. Not this time. We created it. Not this time. No. Not this time. It's totally made up. Now, we'll get into her reasons for why, but the bottom line is basically she believes it was an invention of the Spanish Inquisition. Now, as you watch her TikToks and read her comments, you start to realize very quickly that she believes the Catholic Church to be the single most evil organization in human history. So let's start off by looking at her TikTok bio. Mom, Lenial, mom, wife, she, they, bi, Jewish, and allegedly has a BA in anthropology and history. I doubt it. So now that you have a background, or at least a little bit of knowledge about Mom Millennial, let's watch some of her TikToks, look at some of the comments on those TikToks, and you could kind of get an idea of why this woman is creating such a buzz on the internet. So let's start with her most famous TikTok, the one that got all of this started. Someone commented on one of her videos that there is proof of Romans as we have records, letters, etc. And this was her response. Right, so you're telling me that you got an entire degree in classics and it never occurred to you that there isn't a single roman document there is not a single roman document polybius is fake appian is fake plutarch cicero dio cassius all of that allegedly is fake let's continue on it always blows my mind talking to people who have invested their lives in the study of ancient rome because y'all don't seem to realize it didn't exist it didn't exist at all. It is a figment of the Spanish Inquisition's imagination. Zero primary documents. Okay, so zero primary documents. The Roman Empire, or Rome as a civilization, was created by the Spanish Inquisition. Now, clearly, she is very heavily influenced by modern historic thought, to an extreme level. But I was curious, why such hate for the Spanish Inquisition? You know, something that happened centuries and centuries ago. I thought maybe because she's Jewish and the Spanish Inquisition was famously not very friendly to the Jewish people, that maybe that was it. But then I read something else in her bio. Witch talk science. That's right. She's a witch. She's the granddaughter of the witches they forgot to burn. If the Spanish Inquisition burning witches created less of whatever this is, then I'm very pro-Spanish Inquisition. All right, let's continue on. None. This feels like arguing with someone in like the year 3000 CE that is convinced that Disney World was the ruler of the North American continent. Disney does own a lot of stuff. Just putting that out there. It, it's not real, dude. Did you not think it's weird that anytime we find in situ ancient Roman sites, the letters are all written in Greek? That's another one of her takes, that the Latin language is also made up from the Spanish Inquisition, that there isn't thousands of latin inscriptions all over the former roman empire we have babylonian we have hieroglyphics no roman it was bread and circuses it's a circus man that's another thing that's funny is while denying the existence of rome you'll notice in a lot of her videos because she is a trained classicist whatever that's worth nowadays, she uses Roman phrases or words or, or even Roman ideas that shouldn't exist because, you know, it's a myth. 
So in this TikTok, she starts to talk about the city of Pompeii. And right away, you could tell that this means a lot to her because this is the number one thing people use to try to debunk her crazy theories. When you went to Pompeii, did you go on a tour and pay attention? Because Pompeii was rediscovered in the 1700s. And by the 1800s, it's where the 1% went to fucking party. Now, I can't really debunk this because... I did some research and I couldn't really find anything on it. I mean, it makes sense that in the 18th century, rich people would go party in Pompeii. But whenever I looked for that sort of information, all I got was about the Romans themselves partying in Pompeii. So maybe she's right. I don't know. We have not uncovered any more of Pompeii really since the original digging out. That's just untrue. Uh, new things in Pompeii are discovered all the time, but to say there's been no new discoveries since the 18th century is just wrong. In fact, earlier this year, I made a video on a complete chariot that was found on Pompeii, link in the description. So, yeah, that's just incorrect. But we do know that they stole everything, they broke a bunch of shit, they filled the pottery with their own wine and then drank it. Those bastards. All of the writing we have found in Pompeii off of the main square is written in ancient Greek. So she brings up Greek a lot, which is funny because obviously the city of Pompeii had a lot of Greek influence. The southern Italian cities of Magna Graecia were not that far away. We know for a fact that there's Greek writing all over the Roman world, but most of the famous graffiti at Pompeii is in, well, the made up language of Latin. That Latin lettering is Victorian graffiti. Hell, geologists have known for years that there's no distal tephra to even show that there was an explosion of Pompeii's volcano in 79 AD. The volcano didn't even blow up in 79 AD because the sources confirming that are fake. I want to take a look at some of the comments on this video because the way that she argues in circles kind of makes it so you can't really debunk her. I actually think it's kind of impressive. They literally do several excavations a year. Are you trying to claim that there wasn't an eruption? No, there has been many eruptions. Just no evidence of the one in 79 CE. I don't know if this is supposed to be satire or not. It's not. Bestie, I'm sorry, but you cannot be out here trying to disprove Pliny. We don't have a single original document. Sorry about your luck. Pliny's letters were transcribed in the 5th century. How does that support your argument? According to whom? Oh, right, the church. If only they allowed multispectral analysis, but ever since the Shroud of Turin debacle, they won't. Again, a lot of this comes back that the Catholic Church is inherently evil somehow. They have uncovered Pompeii since the original digging out. The majority of Pompeii is still buried. They uncovered an entire insula this summer and not a single Roman artifact. Here she claims that the Romans were actually the Sea Peoples, you know, the people responsible for part of the Bronze Age collapse. How can you claim Mount Vesuvius eruption to be unproven with remains of humans saying otherwise? Right, there is actual Romans still, you know, there. If the Romans never existed, how about Julius Caesar from an Egyptian point of view? He's a Roman dude in Egypt, taking our girl Cleo to Rome, to the Romans. By the way, there are sources on both sides of this. Caesar literally means Moorish. What? Caesar means Moorish? This guy says, I don't get why people would lie about this stuff. And her answer was, because until the 1970s, the point of archaeology, the entire point of archaeology, was to prove white, and I'm pretty sure she means Christianity, was superior. Every archaeologist before 1970, it stopped after that somehow, was only digging in all of these foreign lands to prove that white Christianity was superior. Now this comes back to her more modern historical take on almost every argument, but you can kind of see what she's getting at here. So here we have a TikTok where she's talking about Trajan's market. So this should be good. Sweet raptor Jesus, please do not let this actually be the future of my field. If the future of classicists and historians is this, what are we even doing? I'm just going to take Trajan's market because it's late and I'm tired. This is Trajan's Trajan. market. Except it's not a market. It was a mixed-use commercial residential space. Sounds like a market. Not that it matters because nothing about that is original. Let's go to the official website. As always, I will pin the link in the comments, but as you can see, in 1574, Trajan's market was torn apart to build a convent. But then where did this version come from? Again, from the official website. 
I'm in praise of fascism. <sighs> They're literally just tearing down people's houses to reconstruct the fantasy of Rome. I can't believe I have to say don't trust the fascists. Don't trust the fascists. 99.9% .9 of historians and archaeologists, even after that mysterious 1970s date, think that Rome is real. But if you do, you're a fascist. So another person left a comment pointing out that Spain was just a former area of the empire. And this is her response. Okay, so you are like the fifth or sixth kid to say this to me. And I have never been more pleased with my circus roots than playing whack-a-mole with you trolls. My goodness, I am having such a good night. We're the trolls. But I now realize this must be something one of the people that has been talking about me has said. And it's hilarious because it means they've entirely missed the point. Backwards, babies. Without Spain, there is no Rome. Because Rome, like white, is not a culture. It has no unique identifiable cultural marks. What you're thinking of is Greek architecture, or Egyptian, or Mesopotamian, or Anatolian, or Etruscan, or Oscan, or Umbrian. So all of the other peoples of Italy existed. The Umbrians, the Etruscans, etc. The Greeks, the Egyptians, the Babylonians, but not Rome. And again, as I've tried to think why she has centered on Rome as her mysterious doesn't exist civilization instead of, say, the Greeks or the Egyptians or whatever is because the Catholic Church came from Rome. And at the end of the day, her main target is the Catholic Church. In, you know, indigenous groups, the Church is Rome. I agree. The Church is Rome. But there would be no Church without Rome. Unfortunately for us, she actually turned the comments off on this video. I know. I'm honestly having a hard time comprehending that a lot of my commenters in the past couple of days have basically been saying, but the church would never do that to white people. Y'all honestly believe the same people that wiped out two continents worth of indigenous people wouldn't do that in Europe. You think South America was their first rodeo? I can't believe y'all just taken the church's word for it, that the manuscripts that they have handed you are the 100% legitimate truth. So only ancient church manuscripts are false, I think. All other religious documents are true, including the Torah. Hmm. Just, I, I hope that my POC TikTok finds this so they can just laugh and laugh. So obviously, spouting all this crackpot bullshit, she's starting to get a lot of pushback, and not just from the people she thinks are going to push back on her, which I'm assuming are Catholic white dudes, but also from, you know, normal, everyday historians, archaeologists, people on TikTok that just know she's full of shit, and of course, she immediately plays the victim card. No, Maxwell. These are consequences. I know it's a foreign concept to some men, but I assure you this is nowhere near doxing. I would know, as angry men on the internet have been trying to dox me for over 10 years. Isn't it crazy how you can't just say insane crackpot theories on the internet without terrible angry men getting mad at you? What is this world coming to? Doxing looks like what's stuck in my filters of my comments section where people are getting angry because they can't find my home address. Attempted doxing is when you threaten to call CPS on my adult children because you don't like what I have to say. What are you even doing here? You don't follow me. And I very specifically told you to stop bothering me, which now makes this harassment. Are you really that insecure? I feel bad for her. I really do. You know, if I had known there was a genuine white supremacist coordinating the attacks against me in the last few days, I probably would have started with him, Aiden Mattis. My first clue should have been when I blocked him ages ago. I don't and know who Aiden Mattis is, but if I had to take a guess, if I just, if I had to take a guess, I'm going to assume he's not a white supremacist. I could be wrong. 
six and a half hours late. All right, so our boy Aiden Mattis here is a medievalist by training, a meme lord by choice. So he does fit to the kind of person she doesn't like. Male, white, looks like he's interested in history. Let's watch one of his videos. These are two great examples of documents that people think are primarily Roman, but we don't have the originals. Hey guys. So once again, um, that's not what primary source means. A copy of a primary source document is still a primary source document. The things you learn when you actually do go to college for history, or just pay attention in high school. What a fascist. Unbelievable. I'm getting out of here now. And he still couldn't stop talking shit about me. But let's take a look at who Aiden oh, really is. Again, all of this is publicly available information, and most of it is actually in the news. For those of you not in the know, this is who we're talking about. And his LinkedIn confirms that he went to Penn State. As does this article about a Parkland survivor being harassed by Aiden. Mattis even admitted that was the entire point. Classy, Mr. Mattis. That survivor of Parkland, by the way, was David Hogg, who has made politics his life. And usually when he's getting harassed on Twitter, it's because of his political takes, not because he was a survivor of Parkland, but, you know. But not unexpected, since you want to put professors on watch lists. There was another group that did that. The ADL didn't like them either. Back off. Back off, Aiden, you white supremacist. So yeah, that's basically all I have to say about Mom Lenial. You could go watch her TikToks for yourself. They're pretty fun to watch. They'll give you a good laugh. But as I was doing this video, I found out something about Mom Lenial that's even worse than her theories. Even worse than calling everyone she disagrees with a fascist. Something so terrible that I can't believe she's still allowed online. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, she worked at BuzzFeed. <laughs> All right, my dudes, that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's kind of different than what we've done in the past. But if you did, leave a like on the video, and I'll know to make more like this in the future. We recently passed 5,000 subs, which is completely crazy. Thank you guys so much for subscribing, for watching, for leaving likes on the videos. And as always, Delende S. Carthago. And a big shout out to the most loyal dudes in the Empire, my Patreon subscribers. If you'd like to join their noble ranks and see your name scroll across the screen in all its glory, Head on over to patreon.com slash updating on Rome. The Empire needs your support.